Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting a watercolour mandala and I hope you'll paint along with me. So I've got everything out that I think I'm going to need but I'm, I may make some decisions as I go along uh, that might change things uh, but I've got out um, some watercolour paper and that's a, a good start. I've got some drawing implements here, so a pencil and a rubber. Um, I've got some compasses and a ruler. Um, I'm going to do something very, very basic in pencil just to get me started. And then I'm going to move on to the watercolour. So I've got something new here to have a little bit of a play with and I've got a new kind of plastic palette. I thought I might get a few of these that are kind of cheapish and put limited palettes in them because I really like, I like having a lot of colours on hand but I can find it a bit overwhelming. So in here I've just squeezed a tiny little bit out of some tubes. So that's that one there, that's um, that's Quinequido Magenta in there. And I've got um, a Phthalo Turquoise, Payne's Grey. I've got various different colours in here that um, I've squeezed out from different tubes from different brands. And I'll put a list in the description of what I'm working with. I've got a couple of brushes out. Um, I've got a kind of medium sized one. This is a size six. Um, I've got a tiny little brush. This one is a, I don't know if they call it a detail brush or a liner brush, but it's a size two. Um, and then I've got a set of brushes here, which are lots of different kind of sizes I can grab if I decide I need something else. I also got out a little gold. So this is a Kuritake uh, gold paint, which is very nice. Um, and I just bought this as an individual paint. Um, I do have a palette of them, but actually this gold isn't in the palette and I like this one. It's got a, it's got a kind of a richness to it. It looks like a vintagey gold. And then the usuals, I've got some water, paper towel, and yeah, so let's, let's get started. So I'm going to start drawing myself a nice basic framework first. So if you would like to skip the drawing stage, then that is totally understandable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my website a link to a document that has uh, this kind of basic framework in. And you can print it out, you can print it out straight onto watercolour paper and it's in a nice kind of pale grey and then by the time you've watercoloured over the top of it you won't see it. Um, or there's a, a black one that you can use and you could trace that onto some watercolour paper and use your eraser to get rid of the pencil marks. Uh, so I'm just mark it onto the page and I'm going to decide how big my mandala is going to be. So the paper is nine and a half centimetres. I think nine's too big. Eight could work. Maybe seven. Let's go for seven centimetres as the radius. So I'm going to set my compasses to half of that. So three and a half centimetres. So it's, a, it's just shy of a, an inch and a half. That's my starting point and I'm going to use this to draw a shape that's known as the seed of life because it's 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 really central to a lot of geometric drawing and it's if you've ever made a hexagon at school or anything like that then this is the same thing. So you draw a circle in the centre of your page. Now I'd normally like to make mine quite light but I want you to be able to see it so I'm going over it to make it dark enough for you to see on camera. But you don't have to do it this dark. And then I make a mark um, somewhere on the circumference of the circle. Um, I like to measure in from the side. And make a mark that way. All that does is it means that my mandala will be straight on the page. And then from there, I haven't changed the width of the compasses at all, but I'm now I'm going to put the point 
as close as I can to that mark, just to make sure it's nice and accurate. And you can check that it goes through the centre. If it doesn't go through the centre, then either your compass's width have changed, or um, or it's moved slightly. You make another circle. Now I've got two points here where these circles cross. So one there and one there. And I can use those to find the next centre point for the compass. And that should go through the centre. And it should go through the mark that I made to start with, the one that was uh, on the original circle. So one there and one there. And then I can go to this side and do the same thing. And now I've got two more points where the circles cross. I can put my compasses in there. And there, and if it's worked out right, I should get that line to cross on the circle. And it's ever so slightly out. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't match up. I'm going to place the point as close as I can to where all of those join and put in my final circle. So there we go. You can add more circles onto this. You can start at the centre and put more concentric circles in to give you more guidelines. Uh, you can uh, put a circle around, it, around the outside. Um, the other thing that you can do is you've got various points where the circles cross again. So there's one here, and if you go across the centre of the circle, it matches up to one here. And I can take my ruler and join those two points together. Like that. That's just going to give me an extra guideline uh, for my mandala. So let's do that with the other points here. So there's one here and that joins up to that one. And then another one here joins to that one. And if I've lined those up properly, they should all cross at the centre of the circle. I'm going to keep my compasses to hand because I could use them later on. But for now, I'm going to put them to one side and I'm going to think about how I'm going to fill out this shape. So for a mandala, you don't have to, but I like to work from the centre outwards, uh, makes a series of shapes and then respond to them, uh, building a pattern slowly as I go from the centre to the outside. The purpose of making this shape to start with is just to give yourself little tiny sections. So you're not thinking about what to fill the whole page with. All you have to do to start with is think, what can I put in here? I've got a little shape here, what can I put into it? And then repeat it six times and then keep going. Respond to the first shape that you put in and put next, the next shape in and just see where it takes you. What I'm gonna to do to start with is I've made these lines quite dark because I wanted you to be able to see them. You may not think they look very dark now, but, um, but yeah, in order to be able to see them on camera, I needed to kind of go over the lines a few times and make them deeper and darker than normally would. So I'm gonna go over with my rubber, uh, with my eraser, and just anywhere the lines are a bit too dark or I don't want them to be there, I'm just gonna lightly rub them out. I still want to see where they are, so I'm not going to go too wild. But I want to know that if I paint over it, I'm not going to have a really obvious pencil line underneath spoiling my painting. Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, so I've got these petal shapes in the centre. I think I'm going to use some of this Quinacridone magenta because it's beautiful. So earlier in the spring, I got a little set of core watercolours, which I'd not tried before. 
and I've been playing with them a little bit. Um, I just, yeah, I feel like I didn't need new watercolours. That I just, I'm curious and I wanted to try them out. And it's useful having an excuse of having a YouTube channel because it means I can try things out for you. But I do worry about setting kind of dangerous precedents in being the person who goes out and buys lots of watercolours to test. Um, so, but anyway, that all goes to say that I'm really liking this set of um, high chroma colours I got from Core Watercolours. And I'm just going to start, that's very bright. Uh, I'm just going to start filling these petal shapes in. And what I'm going to do is try and leave a little gap around each shape. So I can use the point of my brush to get into the corners and use the side of my brush to smooth it all down. And once I've filled the shape, I can take a little bit more concentrated colour and dot it into the centre. So it'll just be a bit darker in the centre, hopefully. One thing I've noticed about these core colours is that they, they're a bit more uniform uh, than some of the other colours I've worked with. They do kind of spread out. So I could take a kind of a clean, damp brush and just push the water colour down into the centre and then a little bit more dotting of that really concentrated colour in the centre and that'll just give me a nice gradient from dark to light. So let's take the paint that's already on my brush Add a little bit more water so it flows better and make the second shape. So I'm really following the pencil lines that I put in and trying to be careful to stay within them. I'm going to try and neaten this shape up a little bit. And I start making the shape smaller than I want it. And then I can go in and refine the edges and drag it out. And as long as the paint is still wet, I can keep doing that until I'm happy with the shape. And what I really want is I want all my six shapes to kind of look consistent. They don't have to be identical. But I want them to kind of look like deliberate, like they're deliberately the same size. And then to do the rest, I'm going to turn my page because I find it easier painting these at the right angle. I'm going to carry on around the circle and paint in all six petals. So for that first kind of go round, all I really did was colour inside the pencil lines. But for the second row, I want to kind of fill in in between them. And I don't want to just kind of fill in one single shape. I want to do something a little bit more interesting. So I've got to have a think about what kind of shape I might want to make. It would make sense to kind of do something kind of pointy that goes in here. And then maybe I kind of create a rounded shape, maybe here to break it. Or maybe I create a kind of a, a smaller, wider petal. Um, I can use my pencil and maybe make a, a kind of a trial version. So I'm using that center line that I, I put in earlier. And I can put in just a couple of 
slightly curved lines there. So I've got this shape in here now to fill in. I want to make this shape again around the circle. So what I need to do is kind of, I could use my compasses. Uh, let's turn it around, it's easier to do it this way. Stick it in the center and then bring the point of the compasses down to where that uh, line meets my uh, half, where that kind of arrow point meets my halfway point. And then I can go around and just make a tiny mark where that line crosses. I could also do it for where these lines meet the petals, but I think having got these points in perfectly, I think a little bit of variation on where they start is going to be okay. So now I can just go around and put in my slightly curved petal lines. One thing that can be really easy to do when you're starting at one point and working around the circle is that your lines slowly get further and further out or further and further in as you go around. So it's always good to kind of to finish and take a look at how the whole thing sits and maybe make any adjustments that you think it might need. And now I'm ready to fill in these pieces. So I've mixed together a couple of these blues. I'm thinking I want something turquoise in the centre and I'm going to use a nice bright vibrant turquoise. But I want something to paint the rest in first and then just dot in that little bit of turquoise right in the centre. And I could just use plain water, but if I use a very pale wash of something to start with, then I can just see where I'm painting a little bit better. So I want it to be a kind of turquoisey blue to finish with. It doesn't really matter too much which colour you pick to start with. I think it's a Payne's Grey that I've gone into there. I'm just going to paint my shape with that so it's nice and pale. And then I'm going to take some of my nice bright turquoise quite concentrated and just dab that into the centre. And that should spread out throughout that shape and give me a nice kind of graduated wash from turquoise to a kind of much softer blue. You may have seen that I've left a little bit of white space in between all of my shapes. That means that if any of the shapes aren't dry uh, to start with, you don't need to wait before you can paint the bits in the middle. If you wanted to wait until your shapes were dry and then paint and not leave that white line, then you could quite easily do that as well. So again, I'm going to carry on and do these six little shapes. Okay, so now I've got 12 shapes that are kind of like little wedges and I'm just going to pick another colour and do those. So this one, I think I want something much more neutral. So I'm going to go for this. blue. So this is lunar blue and it's really kind of very grey blue. And it's got some granulation in it so it'll be a little bit different to the colours around it. And again I'm filling the shape and using the pencil lines as a guideline. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap between all of the shapes. 
You could choose to join these bits together or you can leave a little gap of the middle. It's entirely up to you. I am going to leave a little gap. If one of the gaps accidentally gets closed, I might come back and join them together. But you can choose what you do and you can always add more paint. You can always make shapes bigger. And you can always leave things until they're dry. Come back and add another layer on the top if you're not happy with them. So now what next? I want to keep building out from the centre. I quite like the idea of having a, a, a solid, a more solid ring around here. In which case I'm going to take my compasses again and mark something in. So I'm just guessing how big to make it. So that looks okay. So in this ring that I've got, I've got these six segments and then in each segment I've kind of got three sections and I could paint each of those a different colour. I think it might be nice to go a little bit darker. Maybe I could mix together the pink and the blue and see what happens there. So let's take some of this pink and mix it into this blue here. I should get a nice kind of mauvey purple. That's pretty good. Um, I think I'd like it to be a bit darker, so I'm going to mix some Payne's Grey into it. A little bit more of the pink to counteract the blueness in that. Oh, oops, very nice. At the end of each of these petals is now a little kind of triangle shape. So I'm going to use my new kind of purpley colour that I've mixed up to fill in that little triangle. There won't be very much of it. Now I'm not changing the colour but I've added a lot more water onto my brush and so I've got a nice watery version of that same violety purple colour. And I'm going to fill in. Now I have a look at this, I don't see as much difference between these sections as I would like, so I'm going to take some of the paper towel and just use it to soak up some of the watercolour from those areas that I've painted and make them a little bit lighter and that's a lot better. Okay, I really like in the way that this is looking a bit like a stained glass window um, and I think that I want something a little bit different. So I've got these kind of little triangle bits here um, that have got the uh, the lines running through the middle. I think maybe just a little dot in each one. It's too small of a circle to use my compasses to draw. So I'm going to try and pencil it in. But I know they're not going to be totally perfect circles, but that's okay. Let's 
just try this one here. I'm going to try and paint a little circle and then just use the point of my brush to go around and make it bigger. Okay, so that's one. Let's try the next one. So again, a little circle and then use the point of my brush to go around and draw it out to the size I want it. Right, now the little petals around there. Uh, again, I've just added some water to my brush. So essentially I've got the same pink on. I just uh, did a not very, very thorough washing out of the brush. So I get the same colour, but a much lighter version of it. So yeah, if you're struggling to paint these shapes, then I'd suggest a few things. One is smaller brush. Um, Another is you could increase the size of the paper so you're painting larger areas. Another is to uh, wait till all of your areas are completely dry before painting the next section and don't try and leave gaps between them because that's a bit more fiddly than just trying to fill in the, the area. It's also a bit more forgiving if you overlap some colours Leaving gaps means you can kind of work a bit faster because you don't have to wait for things to dry. When painting these shapes, it's quite nice to have like one half that's just a little bit lighter than the other. Just uh, gives it a sense of depth and interest. And all I'm doing is when I run out of liquid on my brush, I'm going into the water and adding a bit more liquid and moving it all around. And when I run out of colour, I'm going back to the, uh, the palette. So I've got a few sections left, these kind of big lobes on the outside. And I have to decide what I'm going to do with those. I think maybe like a, a kind of an echo of this shape here would be quite good in there. So yeah, I think maybe some kind of like a band like this around the outside of the whole thing could be interesting. So I could take my take my compasses and instead of putting them on the center, I can put them on the um on each of my smaller circles and just put a little, a second circle. I'll have to do this six times. And some of my paints are still wet, so I've got to be a little bit careful. And I think for this, I need to go back to the blues and back to that turquoise as well. So let's mix some of that in with the kind of this mid blue that's just on my palette here. And I'm going to paint each of these sections here. Up until, up until that line 
that I've just put in. And leaving myself that band around the outside that I'll fill in in a minute. I'm going to take a little bit more of that concentrated blue and just touch it in that edge. And that should give me kind of a nice graduation as that paint kind of works its way into that whole shape. When you do that, you want to be make sure that the uh, the paint is still wet and it's wet throughout the whole of the little shape that you've painted so you don't get any harsh lines in it. If it does dry out at all, just go over again and re-wet it. And then when it's all nice and wet, just touch in that colour along one edge. For the final bit, um, I want something kind of dark, so I'm going to go back to this purpley colour that I made. I'm going to mix some of that blue into it. And end up with two colours that are pretty much the same. I'm going to mix some of the lunar blue in as well. And then I go all the way around the outside. dab some of this Payne's Grey in here as well. So your mandala could be finished here, but if you want to, you can go to the next level and add another layer of colour. So for that, I've got my uh, very fine brush here. I can use the same colours that I've already been using here and just add an extra layer of intensity. But I've also got the gold. I'm going to add a little bit of water onto here. I'm not using the very small brush to add the water because it would take me forever. I'm just going to add the slightly bigger brush. Let the water kind of churn all that gold up and make it come to life. everything's completely dry I can go over it with the eraser and get rid of any of those little pencil lines that were in any of my gaps and around the outsides. 
So there we go, there's my watercolour mandala based on that seed of life pattern. There's so many things that you can do with this by choosing different segments and uh, choosing how to colour them, how to divide them, how to split them, which patterns to use inside them. There are so many alternatives, but it's a really kind of calming process making it because you're just focusing on one section at a time, making one decision and then repeating that uh, decision six times in each of the sections and building up the patterns and the colours as you go. So I hope you enjoy this one and I look forward to seeing your versions of it. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.